Thank you for purchasing the GTO Mighty Mule 350 Easy Gate Opener. When correctly installed and used for the proper application, the Mighty Mule will give you many years of reliable service. This video provides an overview of how to install your Mighty Mule 350 single gate opener. It is intended as a visual aid only and is not intended for use in lieu of the installation manual. The installation manual includes additional important safety instructions that must be followed in order to have a safe operating system. Watch this video and read the entire installation manual before beginning the installation. The Mighty Mule 350 comes with hardware for installation on a gate that swings into the property when opening. If your gate opens out from the property, you will need to purchase an additional push-to-open bracket from your retailer. Your gate should not exceed 16 feet in length, nor weigh more than 550 pounds. If you have slide gates or large commercial gates, if you require more sophisticated access control systems, or need professional installation, call GTO Incorporated at 1-800-543-GATE or visit our website at www.gtoinc.com for more information. We will be happy to provide you with information on our GTO Pro Professional line of gate openers and accessories and refer you to your nearest dealer. The Mighty Mule 350 has a built-in obstruction sensitivity feature that makes the gate stop and reverse its direction if an obstruction is encountered when opening or closing. The Mighty Mule 350 also has an adjustable auto-close feature, which automatically closes your gate within the time limit you set. The auto-close comes from the factory in the off or disabled mode, which means you will have to close the gate by pressing the transmitter button or using another activation device. We will tell you how to change these settings later in the video. Before you begin your installation, it is important to note that the Mighty Mule 350 comes with an 18-volt transformer for maintaining the system's battery charge, or it can also be solar-powered with the additional purchase of Mighty Mule solar panel kits. See the installation manual for more details. The Mighty Mule 350 is designed to be powered by a 12-volt automotive or marine-type battery which enhances the solar compatibility and overall performance of the system. You will need to purchase this 12-volt battery and a weatherproof housing, which can be found at most agricultural and automotive supply stores, before you can install the Mighty Mule 350. If you will be installing the system using the transformer, you will need to purchase enough 16-gauge multi-stranded direct burial low-voltage wire to connect the opener to the transformer. This wire is available at most retailers, or it can be special ordered for you. Do not use telephone or solid core wire, and never splice wires together. To determine the amount of wire you will need, measure the distance from where you will mount the Mighty Mule gate opener to the electrical outlet for the transformer. Do not use more than 1,000 feet of wire. Check the parts list in the installation manual to be sure you have all the components and tools you will need. Some installations require additional materials and hardware, depending on the type of gate and fence post. Refer to your installation manual to determine if you need these materials. We will demonstrate installing the Mighty Mule on a swing, farm tube gate that opens into the property. Before you begin the installation, your gate must be in proper working order, plumb, level, and swinging freely on well-lubricated hinges. Ball-bearing hinges should be used on all gates weighing over 250 pounds. Never use wheels on your gates for any reason. Your gate should be installed on fence posts that are firmly secured in the ground. We recommend positioning the opener arm near mid-height of the gate leaf. It may be necessary to add horizontal or vertical cross members to provide a stable area where the gate bracket can be mounted. Mounting the Mighty Mule directly to a masonry column requires special procedures. See column mount instructions in the installation manual or call 1-800-543-1236 for more information prior to installation. 
Place the post pivot bracket between the post brackets and align the center holes. Insert the 3 8 inch by 2 inch bolt into the center holes and use the 3 8 inch washer and nut to secure. Do not tighten the nut all the way at this time because you will need to make some adjustments later. Now attach the post bracket assembly and the gate bracket to the ends of the opener arm using the clevis pins, bushings, and hairpin clips. The bushings go between the arm and the brackets. Secure the clevis pins with hairpin clips. With the gate in its open position, hold the opener arm level and temporarily clamp the post bracket assembly to the gate post and gate bracket to the gate in their approximate positions. Use a carpenter's level to level the opener. The post bracket assembly's position determines the leverage of the opener as well as the clearance between the opener arm and the gate. A minimum of two inches of clearance between the thickest part of the opener arm and the gate in both the open and closed positions is required. This clearance is very important for automated gate safety as well as the life of your gate opener. Remove the hairpin clip, clevis pin, and bushing from the front mount and gate bracket. Close the gate while supporting the opener arm. Visually align the opener with the gate bracket to see if there will be enough clearance when the gate is closed. If not, rotate the post pivot bracket to a position that will give the required clearance, while still allowing one of the post pivot bracket holes to line up with a post bracket hole. Now return the gate and opener to the open position and recheck the clearance. Make additional changes until you achieve the required clearance in both the open and closed positions. Secure the post pivot bracket and the post bracket alignment with the 5 16 inch by 1 and 3 quarter inch bolt, washer, and nut. The post bracket is designed with a curvature that fits both round and square fence posts. Since the post bracket assembly carries the entire thrust of the active Mighty Mule, it is absolutely necessary that it be mounted with bolts that completely penetrate the fence posts. Recheck the gate and post bracket positions and opener arm level, and mark the holes in the middle of the bracket slots so there will be some room for adjustment when permanently mounting the brackets. Remove the opener arm and brackets from the gate and fence post. Drill 3 8 inch holes in the fence post as marked. Use the 3 8 inch by 6 inch bolt, nuts, washers, and lock washers to attach the post bracket assembly. Cut off the ends of the bolts extending beyond the tightened nuts. Now drill 3 8 inch holes in the gate cross member and mount the gate bracket with the 3 8 inch by 3 inch bolts, washers, nuts, and lock washers. Cut off excess bolt extending beyond the tightened nuts. The closed position stop plate helps stabilize the gate leaf in the closed position. With the opener removed from the gate, move the gate to its closed position. Place the closed position stop plate on the end of the gate frame at mid-height. Extend the stop plate to make contact with the fence post and secure the stop plate to the gate at that position. The type of gate you have will determine the type of hardware you need to attach the stop plate to your gate. Use U-bolts if you have a tube or chain link gate. Use screws for wood gates. To help in the wiring and programming of the Mighty Mule 350 in the following steps, reattach the opener to the mounting brackets upside down, again using the clevis pins, washers, and hairpin clips. Remove the control board access cover and set aside. Place the 12 volt automotive battery inside the weatherproof housing within 6 feet of the Mighty Mule 350. The weatherproof housing can be partially buried or simply placed on the ground. Attach the wires of the battery wire harness to the battery terminals using screws or other hardware depending on the type of battery you are using. Please pay attention to the color of the wires. The black wire connects to the negative terminal and the red wire connects to the positive terminal. If the wires are connected incorrectly, the control board will be damaged. Use petroleum jelly on each terminal to help prevent corrosion. 
Make sure the opener's power switch is turned off, and plug the battery harness into the control board power plug in the opener arm. Use the 16-gauge multi-stranded direct burial wire to connect the transformer to the opener control board. The wire can be buried in a trough or run alongside the fence. Wire coming from the ground to the control box should be run through PVC conduit to protect it from lawn mowers, weed eaters, and grazing animals. Do not plug the transformer into the outlet until after you have connected it to the control board with low voltage wire. Strip one half inch off the ends of the low voltage wire and attach these ends to the transformer terminals. Make sure that the exposed wires do not touch each other as it can short out the system when plugged in. At the gate, strip three sixteenths of an inch off the ends of the low voltage wire and twist tightly. Insert the wires into the two terminals marked 18 VAC. The wires can go in either terminal. Tighten the set screws against the exposed ends of the wires. Now plug in the transformer. We strongly recommend using a surge protector. The GTO transformer is intended for indoor use only. If the transformer can only be plugged into an outside electrical outlet, a weatherproof housing or cover must be used. Mount the receiver in a high position, but do not secure it permanently. You may need to move it later to get the best reception. The push-pull dip switch on the control board is used to program the opener for a push-to-open or pull-to-open application. It comes from the factory programmed for pull-to-open. The close time potentiometer is used to set the desired auto close time. Use a small screwdriver to set the timer from the off position up to 120 seconds. Refer to the control board settings section of the installation manual for more details on these options. To set the Mighty Mule 350's closed position, turn the power switch to the on position. Activate the gate by pressing the transmitter button. Prepare to stop the gate by pressing the transmitter again when the gate's positive stop plate makes contact with the fence post. The ideal closed position is when the gate closes firmly without straining against the fence post. You can repeat the step until you are satisfied with the gate's closed position. With the gate in the desired closed position, press and hold the Set Limit button on the control board for 5 seconds. Press the transmitter button and allow the gate to return to its fully opened position. Your gate's closed position limit is now programmed. All GTO transmitters are set to the same code at the factory and are ready to operate the Mighty Mule with no programming necessary. However, for your safety and security, we strongly recommend that you change the factory setting to your own personal code. First, remove the transmitter cover. There are nine dip switches, each of which can be placed in three different positions. The code can be changed with a small screwdriver. Do not set all switches in the same position, such as all pluses, all minuses, or all zeros. Once you have set the dip switches to your personal code, replace the cover. To program the new code in the control board memory, Press the transmitter button and the Learn Remote button on the control board for five seconds. Release both buttons and your new personal code is programmed. The Mighty Mule has built-in obstruction sensing, which stops and reverses your gate if it comes in contact with an obstruction in its path. This safety function comes from the factory with the stall force potentiometer set at minimum. In many gate installations, this setting will need to be increased to overcome the weight and size of the gates. Keep in mind, however, that while you must determine the best potentiometer setting for smooth gate operation, you must also determine the lowest possible setting for safe gate operation. Always remember, safety first. If you need to increase the force of your gate opener because of gate weight or wind, Use a small screwdriver to increase the setting in small increments until the gate functions smoothly all the way through the open and close cycles without self-obstructing.
If you plan to attach additional safety devices or accessories, such as contact sensors, non-contact sensors, keypads, or others at this time, refer to the Mighty Mule 350 installation manual as well as the installation manual that came with the safety device or accessory. Review these manuals before installing and be sure that all safety devices and accessories meet national and local safety codes. When everything is installed and all settings are set, replace the control board access cover. Remove the opener arm from the front and rear mounts and reinstall it with the control board access cover facing downward. This will prevent water from getting into the opener and shorting out the electronics. This is the best time to use your transmitter to test the receiver signal range. You may need to adjust the location of the receiver to obtain the best reception. Once this has been done, secure the receiver. Install the warning signs on each side of your gate. The Mighty Mule is a powerful device and you should stay clear of it when it is operating. Keep your installation manual for future reference. It contains important installation information and the troubleshooting guide. Be sure to fill out the customer support card and mail it to us. Now your Mighty Mule 350 gate opener is installed and ready for use. With proper care and maintenance, it will give you many years of dependable service. GTO offers a full line of accessories for your Mighty Mule. These great accessories are available at most retail locations, or they can be special ordered by your retailer. The Mighty Mule Automatic Gate Lock secures your gate like a deadbolt secures your front door. It also provides extra stability for gates, especially those longer than 8 feet. It automatically locks and unlocks when the gate opens and closes. You can manually open your gate by removing the clevis pens from the opener arm. To prevent unauthorized removal or theft of your Mighty Mule gate opener, substitute a GTO pin lock for the clevis pen on the front mount. For installations where your gates are more than 1,000 feet from an electrical outlet, you need a minimum of one 5-watt Mighty Mule solar panel to maintain the opener's battery charge. Some installations may require additional solar panels for adequate charging power. GTO has an entire line of entry transmitters for access convenience and versatility. You can purchase single-button transmitters, like the one that is included with your Mighty Mule, for additional users. For multiple functions, use the dual and triple button transmitters to open additional gates and open your garage door when used with our garage door receiver. And for pocket size convenience, use the keychain MIDI transmitter. To limit access to your property without the need for multiple transmitters, use the Mighty Mule digital keypad. It is designed to allow selected individuals access with their own entry code while providing security from unauthorized entry. The digital keypad is easy to program so you can change the security codes as often as you like. Where limiting access is not a concern, use the push button for entry and exit control. The push button allows you to open your gate from the house or anyone to open your gate from the convenience of their vehicle. It wires directly into the control board using up to 1,000 feet of low-voltage, 16-gauge, multi-stranded direct burial wire. Never use a lighted doorbell push button because it will drain your opener's battery. To allow free exit from your property, you can install the Mighty Mule gate opening sensor. The sensor is buried alongside the driveway up to 50 feet from the inside of the gate. When a metal object, such as a truck, car, or motorcycle, interrupts the magnetic field around the sensor, a signal is sent to the gate opener's control board, and the gate opens automatically. Thanks for purchasing the Mighty Mule 350 Easy Gate Opener. With proper care and maintenance, we are sure you will enjoy it for many years to come. By the way, please feel free to share this tape with your neighbors when they stop by to check out your new Mighty Mule Gate Opener. And remember, the Mighty Mule makes an excellent gift. It's the gift they will open all year long. 
We at GTO are committed to quality and service. So please, if you ever have any questions about your opener or need to know where to find any of these great accessories, please call us at 1-800-543-GATE or visit our website at www.mightymule.com. We look forward to hearing from you.